Thank you very much. Uh, I believe these days they call them program managers. In my days, it used to be uh, master of ceremonies. <laughs> anyway, program manager, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting us to uh, be with you uh, during the Palestine week against apartheid Israel. I had, in any case, intended to speak, to start speaking about my visit to the Auschwitz uh, uh, concentration camp. Uh, it was an unforgettable experience. There, in addition to the fragments of bones uh, that I picked up, I saw uh, lampshades made of human skin. I saw cushions made of human hair. I saw a glass container with gold that was extracted from the teeth of inmates who before they were killed. So I brought back uh, these fragments of bone to show the people of South Africa what racism logically means. Uh, at the World Youth Festival prior to that, uh, there were 30,000 young people from all over the world. It was in Berlin where they talked and danced and embraced and the whole idea of the, young, of the festival with 30,000 young people from all over the world was to come to know one another, to be friends with one another, and most of all, to confirm that people of various backgrounds are able to meet together in friendship. But when I was at Auschwitz, automatically my mind veered to South Africa. It was three years after Dr. Malan and the Nationalist Party came into power. And as it is known, or maybe forgotten, Dr. Malan and his Nationalist Party were pro-Hitler. In fact, the Minister of Justice, who was Minister of Justice when we were sentenced to imprisonment, had actually been interned in a concentration camp for uh, pro-Nazi activities. So, in I mean, my, automatically my mind turned to South Africa where this pro-Nazi party had come into power. And quite unexpectedly, within two years of their coming to power, uh, they had these uh, uh, laws that were borrowed directly from Hitler's Third Reich. There came the Group Areas Act, the Separate Amenities Act, the Mixed Marriages Act, and so many laws that came uh, from Hitler's Third Reich. Now, I have heard comments about the Holocaust. And I have also read that some people, or oh, uh, in some parts of the world, are disputing that the, that the Holocaust took place. In fact, that has now been proved, uh, all those who are denying that, they have been proved wrong. What has been publicized uh, when people have been 
reading and writing about the Holocaust is that six million Jews were exterminated. What has not been mentioned that in the Holocaust, thousands of communists were killed, thousands of homosexual people were killed, gypsies were killed as well. That is a more complete picture of the Holocaust. On Robben Island, we managed to smuggle in a book called The Diary of Anne Frank. And Anne Frank, together with her parents, Jewish, who are hiding, uh, helped by the Dutch, were hiding in a house uh, to save themselves from, Nazi, from the Nazi who were occupying Holland. And uh, eventually they were discovered, but while they were hiding, this young girl, Jewish, wrote this diary in which she every day uh, made points of what she had experienced, what her thoughts were. Now she became a heroine of all those who opposed racism everywhere in the world. And to us who were prisoners, uh, she meant something special to us. Unfortunately, uh, Anne Frank has been monopolized by the Jewish community or uh, sections of the Jewish community. Whereas to us, Anne Frank was a citizen of the world. And to us, no country and no people can claim, <coughs> sorry, can, they can claim Anne Frank as theirs. As I say, she was an inspiration to everybody, everywhere in the world that was suffering from racism. So Anne Frank belongs to us as to everybody else in the world who suffered from racism. Uh, now what is strange to us, and shocking and surprising to us, is that the people who were the worst victims of Nazism, people of Israel, seem to have suffered from amnesia. They have forgotten what the Nazis did to them because, and their only crime was, they were Jews. It is shocking that Israel now practices racism against the Palestinian people. I, as all of us who were born, not the born free generation of 94, but all of us before that have known what racism is. We know of the humiliation of not being white. We know about libraries, restaurants, parks, hotels, universities that were for whites only. I was arrested, for instance, in 1955 in Bloemfontein because Indians were not allowed, were not supposed to be in Bloemfontein at all. So the officer at the charge office says to me, but I have never seen an Indian in my life. I have got cells for whites, 
I have got cells for what he called the Bantu, but I haven't got a cell to lock you up because there are no Indian cells. So I had to tell him, and he was very polite, I had to tell him, I am not white, uh, so you can lock me up with what you call the Bantu. So when I arrived in Johannesburg to school, I was confronted with this type of a board, if you can all read it. Uh, this is a replica of an actual board uh, that existed uh, in many, many public uh, uh, institutions throughout the country. But the worst part of it is, as you'll see, uh, non-Europeans, prams, and dogs not allowed. So apartheid had reduced people who were not white to the level of dogs. And we also know of the persecution of victims of apartheid. And many people suffered because of their opposition to apartheid. And ours in the ANC was a non-racial struggle for a non-racial democratic South Africa. So in our struggle, people from all groups uh, suffered. Chris Harney, Professor David Webster, Dulcie September were all assassinated. Steve Biko, Ahmed Timol, Babla Saluji, Dr. Neil Egbert were tortured to death while they were in detention. Ruth Slovo, Janet Skun were killed when they opened parcel bombs that were sent by the South African police. Vuisele Mini, Solomon Matlangu were hanged. I find it necessary, although we are talking about Palestine, I found it necessary to talk about our own experiences. And to us, it is more shocking that Israel practices apartheid in 2013 and before that. And there is no regret. There is, in fact, just the opposite. It goes ahead with worse and worse persecution. Consider the separate roads. It's worse than apartheid. In South Africa, in the worst years of apartheid, we did not have separate roads. In Israel, there are separate roads for Palestinians. Separate amenities, wrongful arrests, detention, the brutality of the security forces, we know all about that. Separation of families, trials without representation, torture, denial of basic human rights, checkpoints. These all bring back apartheid. Detention without trial, persecution of activists. All these are racist things in what we call apartheid Israel. This is apartheid, as we know it. And that is why I'm here this morning to speak of justified at times on religious grounds. It is completely unacceptable, this type of uh, uh, persecution. 
There have been comprehensive studies being made about how Israel came to be described as an apartheid state. So we have, for instance, Professor John Dugard. He lived in Europe, he's South African, of course, lived in Europe, visited Israel, Palestine several times a year. And he gave evidence before the Russell Commission last year because he has experienced apartheid in South Africa and apartheid in Israel. For instance, he reminds us that the International Court of Justice in 2004 held that the building of the wall in Israel was illegal. The Geneva Convention and the International Human Rights Convention has to be binding in, in, occupation, in occupied Palestine settlements. This was illegal. The Security Council has spoken of the illegality about the settled settlements in Palestinian territory and the annexation of East Jerusalem, all illegal. The body charged with mon monitoring the fourth Geneva Convention, the International Committee of the Red Cross has judged many Israeli actions in the Palestinian territory to be unlawful. So it's not just us who are showing our solidarity with the people of Palestine. These are credible, including the United Nations, credible international bodies who have condemned what Israel is doing against the people of Palestine. You can weigh this up with other studies. The Human Sciences Research Council of South Africa, made up of scholars across the globe, the HISRC study has found Israel is practicing apartheid and colonialism in the occupied territories. The studies identify examples of practices that amount to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment according to the Convention of the Rights of the Child and the Convention Against Torture. The HRC report says that the three pillars of apartheid in South Africa are all practiced by Israel. Number one, the demarcation of the populations through, according to superior rights, privileges, and services isolated for one group. Two, segregating the people, the population into different geographical areas reminiscent of our group areas. What they call the matrix of dra 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 draconian security laws and policies that were employed there, again, reminiscent of South Africa. The UNICEF study states, each year, approximately 700 Palestinian children aged between 12 to 17 the great majority of them boys are arrested, interrogated, and detained by the Israeli army, the police, and the security agents. In the past 10 years, an estimated 7,000 children have been detained, interrogated, prosecuted, or imprisoned, imprisoned by the Israeli military justice system, an average of two children a day. In 1977, the United Nations passed a resolution, and I repeat, the United Nations passed a resolution inaugurating the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. So it is not an invention of South Africans who are showing their solidarity. It is the United Nations that passed this Day of Solidarity. 
But it is not surprising that the unrepentant and racist apartheid twins, apartheid Israel and apartheid South Africa, had the contempt of defying United Nations resolutions and resolutions of other international bodies. The ANC and our government have a proud record of the solidarity with the, of the, with the uh, Palestinian people struggle. On numerous occasions, President Mandela reiterated our solidarity. In 1977, he said, we know too well that our freedom in South Africa is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinian people. Soon after Madiba's release from prison in 1990, the then President Bush asked him to renounce his friendship with Cuba, with the Palestinian People's Organization, and with Libya. Madiba's response was swift. He said, when we came to you, to President Bush's America, when we came to all the Western countries for help, you regarded us as terrorists and refused to help us. These countries that you now ask us to renounce were people who stood with us through thick and thin. And you, now you're asking, it's immoral to ask us now to break our ties with the people who stood with us in our freedom struggle. In 1998, at a banquet in honor of Yasser Arafat, Mr. Mandela said, South Africa is proud to be part of the international consensus affirming the right of the Palestinians to self-determination and statehood. But what did the apartheid government do and what did Israel do? The pro-Hitler, the pro-Nazi Dr. Malan was invited to Israel as a guest of honor. And so was John Foster invited to Israel as guest of honor. Israel has never invited any leader of the liberation struggle to visit Israel. I was invited to Israel, not by the Israeli government, but by pro-democracy, and there are de pro-democracy Jewish people, Israelis. They invited me. But obviously, the government did not want me there. And their airline, LL, kept on saying for days and days, sorry, we booked up, we booked up, until the event that I had to attend was over and I couldn't go. To conclude then, the evidence of the people's day-to-day -day experience, the legal considerations, independent studies together, must compel us to speak out. During apartheid in South Africa, the international community played a pivotal role in supporting our struggle. It is only correct that today that we are free and independent, that we must also show our solidarity with the people of Palestine who are fighting against apartheid Israel. We must speak out against the system of apartheid in Israel and call it what it is, it is apartheid. In closing, I would like to just recall an incident when President, in the presence of President Clinton, President Clinton's visit to South Africa, a media person raised the question of South Africa's friendship with Cuba and the, and the PLO. And Madiba's response was, those who are asking us, and this was in the presence of President Clinton, 
those who are asking us to break our ties with people who are our friends can go and jump in the lake. So that is how Madiba responded to those calls. These Palestinian people were and are our friends. And today we reiterate our friendship with the people of Palestinian struggle against apartheid Israel. Thank you very much.